Good morning, everybody. So this is the second portion of my videos uh, in the three-part series, uh, Getting to Know Sylvia's, I suppose I can call it. I didn't even give it a name, but the reason why I'm doing this video driving is because it'll make a whole lot more sense. Let me just hop on the highway here. It'll make a whole lot more sense uh, doing this video driving because this uh, second video is about me going through immigration, like I mentioned to you guys in the previous video, when I was 12 years old. So what happened, uh, I was told we're going on vacation, right? Next thing you know, once we cross the border from Slovakia to Hungary, my dad tells me that I'm never coming back home again, that we're escaping. Of course, I'm kind of confused, not sure what to think about it. But uh, it was an interesting, interesting time in my life. And as a 12-year-old kid, to go through what I just, I'm about to go through, right? It was uh, definitely, I wouldn't say scary because I didn't feel scared because I was kind of excited that we're going on vacation. But uh, when my dad told me what he had to go through, to get us out of Slovakia or former Czechoslovakia, it was unbelievable. Because he immigrated in 86, and he was actually in Germany, and he uh, he was uh, he was ready to have his own freedom. But he knew that if he left me and my brother behind, he would feel probably guilty for the rest of his life. And at the same time, he wanted us to have a better future than whatever was offered back there back then so he came back for us he actually ended up going to jail because uh, when he came back obviously they put him to jail because he uh, immigrated right he escaped before everybody was making fun of him everybody thought he was absolutely crazy because he, he was basically free and uh, he came back and they locked him up but he had a plan he knew exactly what he was doing he was actually uh, smart enough to uh, get in contact with certain people that helped him out he got his passport back and he started making fake documents for us to escape and those documents is like a traveling visa so he ended up getting in touch with uh, people that had the right products the right uh, equipment to make a fake documents so he can get us the heck out of there and that's pretty epic and i'm very very grateful every single day of my life that he did that for us so he made fake documents but it wasn't as easy as us going from Slovakia to Austria across the border, right? Because that was a no-no. So like I said, we, uh, they made up a story that we're going on vacation. So we actually had to go Slovakia, borders, Austria. But in order for us to get there, we had to go around because we told people that we're going for vacation to Yugoslavia, former Yugoslavia. So what we had to do is we had to drive to Hungary because guess what the fake papers that he made a couple months before we left he went to Hungary and he actually buried the papers in Hungary that's a story and a half he buried those visa fake documents that he made in Hungary so we can get the heck out of there so we had to go to Hungary to retrieve the papers then we drove to uh, Romania Bulgaria and then to Yugoslavia each border of course I wasn't nervous because I'm thinking you know eh, I'm just a little kid I was just enjoying the ride it was uh, it was interesting for me right I can only imagine how my dad felt because you know the stress of going through that many borders it's not easy but anyways once we got to Yugoslavia we uh, ended up uh, coming to the border between Yugoslavia and Austria and in that moment, everything changed because for some reason, they changed something on the documents that he made. And they changed one thing on the visa. There was a little A, one letter that my dad wasn't aware of because it wasn't, uh, it wasn't uh, a factor when he was making the papers. So that changed in the last minute. So basically they didn't let us go to Austria. They denied us access. They said the document's not right. You're missing that letter. You can either get a new document or we cannot let you in. So of course, my dad was devastated. We had to turn away from the border and uh, 
I guess he had to put on his thinking cap and like I said he has enough connections so he uh, made a few phone calls and we had two options remember guys I am 12 years old we had two options we could have climbed over the mountains from Yugoslavia into Italy or he knew about a tunnel a train tunnel an eight kilometer train tunnel that went from uh, Yugoslavia to Austria he's thinking I have two kids there was another family escaping with us they had uh, similar age kids as well he's thinking there's no way we can climb over some mountains to go to Italy that would not be an option so the only other option of course was that eight kilometer train tunnel so what happened is during the daytime we kind of went close to where the uh, tunnel was and he uh, he sent us kids to kind of go play around by the entrance just to see if there's any guards or if there's any police right because back in the day from Yugoslavia all communism right it was all guarded they knew exactly where the tunnel goes so if they find people in there they don't ask questions they shoot people so anyways we uh, went there kind of looked around played around and there was nothing really happening there so he said okay that's the only option we have so we're gonna have to go through this tunnel so basically we took only a few necessities few suitcases couple of blankets things like that and 1 a.m. in the morning we entered the tunnel you know what the funny thing is I didn't even think about it too much I didn't question anything I'm just like okay I guess this is what we're doing this is what we're doing I didn't feel scared I didn't feel I just kind of went with the flow that's that's kind of how I am you know I whenever I'm presented with a situation I assess it now more than uh, before obviously but uh, I just kind of look at things and that's what's happening that's what we're doing so we entered the tunnel at 1 a.m. and we started walking and honestly guys an eight kilometer walk through a tunnel is something surreal we were walking and walking and walking and then after an hour or so all of a sudden there's some bells that started ringing of course we started panicking because we thought that we were caught or something's going on but then we felt a push of air in the tunnel so then uh, we knew that there was a train coming right and every 500 meters or so there was little uh, notches out like little little uh, cubbies in the wall so that's kind of where we hit when the first where when the first train entered the tunnel it was that part was pretty scary because we're just sitting in those little in those little nubbies and uh, the train just flew by and then we're like okay I guess we gotta keep going so we kept going we kept walking and walking and walking I don't even remember honestly having flashlights I'm pretty sure we did right but it seemed like forever and then another train came by so we kind of knew what to expect and honestly at some point I felt it I know everybody else felt it we honestly didn't feel like there's a light at the end of the tunnel so that's why when I hear now you know almost 30 years later when somebody says oh yeah, yeah I don't know if there's a, a tra if there's a light at the end of the tunnel I tell people trust me there is because I have personal experience with it so we were getting super tired and super anxious because honestly eight kilometers walking in a train tunnel not fun but then in the horizon there was a little peak of light and I believe it was 5 5 a.m. somewhere there that we saw the light at the end of the other side of the tunnel so obviously we got out we uh, kind of quickly get got away from the tunnels so just in case there's anybody there because obviously they would know what's going on so we quickly get out of the tunnel walked down the street and there was some houses and we just we just all fell down in the front yard of one house exhausted just lied on some guy's front yard on the grass and we we're just like oh my gosh we made it the homeowner came out my dad spoke German obviously so uh, 
he said, look, this is what's, what's happening. This is what happened. We just came out of the tunnel. The gentleman was super, super polite, super nice. He brought us water. He brought us some, some other things, I believe. And then my dad asked him, you know, where do we go to uh, find a bus or uh, the highway or whatever to uh, take us to uh, Vienna, to the uh, immigration uh, campus. So that's kind of what I experienced at 12 years old. It was surreal. It was incredible. It was frightening. And when we got to the immigration uh, camp in Vienna, tons of people. It was, yeah, it was just strange, you know? But we sat there for, I believe, a week or so until they found us a place where we could stay and wait for our uh, papers to go either to the United States, uh, Australia, or Canada. And we chose Canada because it was the shortest waiting list. So, once they found us a place, we ended up going on a bus and then they put us basically in like a, it was in a, in a home, right? There were, there were certain people that were helping immigrants. They stayed in their homes. They made us breakfast. They gave us food, a shelter. We got a little bit of clothing. And that's where we stayed for uh, almost 18 months. So obviously kids went to school. I went to school in Austria. We started uh, learning German. So by the time I was 13 years old, I already spoke five languages, you know. Obviously I spoke Slovak, Czech, which is pretty similar. We were learning that in school. I uh, spoke Polish because I lived 40 kilometers from Poland, so I spoke Polish. We had to study Russian, so I spoke Russian. And now I'm tackling another fifth language, German. So it was interesting, but as kids you learn pretty quick, right? So. We went to school, it was pretty awesome. At times it was funny because obviously, you know, we were made fun of and bullied because we're immigrants and ha 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 this and that. Just like always, it always existed and always will, unfortunately. But then uh, we didn't uh, end up study, we didn't end up taking courses like physics and science and history and all that because we found it that it would be more beneficial if we started learning English because obviously we would need it. So we started taking like cooking classes and English classes and things like that. But it was pretty cool, you know, we got on the bus every morning and went to school. And uh, yeah, tackling six language by the time I was 13, it was pretty cool. You know, so the gentleman that we were staying with was super nice to us. He took care of us. And of course, Life has its ups and downs. The gentleman we were staying with ended up having a heart attack. I remember to this day because I actually, I actually saw him die in my father's arms. It was something unbelievable, you know? Life is freaking short. You never know. It was weird, you know? Seeing, uh, seeing the guy that took care of us, just gone anyways we had to find another place to uh, stay because our papers obviously weren't ready we were not ready to uh, go to Canada so we had to go through uh, losing a friend I don't even remember if we went to the funeral or not I honestly don't remember that but then we had to move to another city and we had to stay at another place to wait until we're ready to go to Canada. All this happened while I'm 12 years old. Not easy on a kid. But we met some interesting people. We met some new friends and we uh, were waiting until we got the papers to go to Canada. Sure enough, we got it. We had our uh, health examination and tests and all that stuff. And then uh, on December, I believe December 12th, I believe it was December 12th, 88, we got our 
ticket and we went from Vienna to Paris and from Paris to Montreal that's the only uh, the only city that was available so here we are arriving in Canada landed dealt with immigration did all that they were offering us a uh, certain amount of money for shelter for rent for clothing and everything else it was December it was minus 30 Montreal <laughs> I remember walking down the street my gla I was wearing glasses at the time I had icicles coming from my glasses you know and uh, we were looking for an apartment to live to start uh, to start our lives in Canada and we found an apartment that was no joke it was five dollars more than what we were allowed from the government the government was gonna give us like six hundred dollars or something towards rent and whatever we found was five dollars more so they're like no we cannot do this for you this and that on top of everything we didn't speak French so I was like all right so what am I gonna have to tackle another language so my dad wasn't very happy with the way we were treated and you know uh, he said this is not cool you know like why are we being denied this that and the other one we went through so much already he didn't really enjoy the cold I guess and we were kind of confused with the whole French thing so he said you know what screw it he bought us uh, Greyhound bus tickets and we booked it for Vancouver so December December uh, we were driving a Greyhound through uh, through Canada I remember we stopped in Saskatchewan it was minus 44 <laughs> welcome to Canada right but it was unbelievable you know the whole country just covered in snow we're driving on the bus and then we get to BC we get to Hope and everything was green we're just like what it was almost like a completely different country we get to Vancouver it was uh, it was evening because I remember it being dark but it was warm it was completely a different climate almost right it was beautiful and I remember we came to uh, Vancouver and we found a hotel it was called I'll never forget this hotel it's still there English Bay Hotel on uh, Denman Street just uh, just a block off, block off of Davy Street so we went to the hotel got settled in and of course we ran to the beach English Bay and everybody wanted to dip their toes in Pacific Ocean <laughs> it was pretty pretty incredible so that's where we were we celebrated our first Christmas in Canada in English Bay Hotel we were super happy grateful and fortunate that we're uh, able to start a new life so that's that guys that's my story of uh, my little journey through several several countries and an eight kilometer tunnel to get to freedom so I hope you guys enjoyed that you got to learn a little bit more about me and the next video I'll tell you a little bit uh, how it was uh, growing up in Canada I appreciate your time guys I know this video is a little bit longer than the other ones but uh, it's part of who I am so I hope you uh, enjoyed it and I'll see you guys on the next video talk to you soon peace